ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان سيدنا وحبيبنا مولانا سيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله خير النبي اجتباه هدى للعالمين ارسله ارسل الله بدين الحق ليظهر على دين كل ولو كره الكافرون اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وازواجه وذريته واصحابه والتابعين وتابعين باحسان الى يوم الدين اما بعد عباد الله اذكركم اياي بتقوى الله سبحانه وتعالى اذكركم بقوله سبحانه وتعالى في القران الكريم حيث يقول يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون وذكركم اياي بحفظ القران الكريم بسنه سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته الحمد لله we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the blessings and bounties that he has bestowed upon us alhamdulillah with all that we see in the world alhamdulillah with all that we see within inside of this country we say alhamdulillah for what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with alhamdulillah i'd like to just take this opportunity of this khutbah to just uh remind uh each of us myself and everyone that is here today allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the quran فَذَكِّرْ فَإِنَّ ذِكْرُ تَنْفَعَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ That remind one another because in that mutual reminder is a benefit. Perhaps many of the things that we've heard that I'll mention in this hadith, uh, we have heard before. And if so, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to have greater efficiency uh, in those things in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So one of the things that we say kind of in the modern times is that time is gold. Uh, however, time in Islam is more than gold or any precious material thing in this world. Because our deen guides us not only to the importance of time, but also how we value it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet sallam are very clear in telling us of the value of time and that we must not waste it and we know this. There's a hadith in which the Prophet ﷺ talks about where he says, نِعْمَتَانِ مَقْبُونٌ فِيهِمَا كَثِيرًا مِنَ النَّاسِ أَصِحَ وَالْفَرَاغِ The Prophet ﷺ says in a hadith, very concise, but he says that there are two blessings which many people lose. Their health and their time for doing good deeds. So what I want to do in our time right now is just list 10 things that each one of them takes less than 10 minutes to complete during a day, but in my opinion can greatly enhance our spiritual life and our spiritual relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Maybe this khutbah or what I want to share with you right now is, is, is taking a different or is, um, is more important to me right now, I'll say, I'll share this with you, in that this year has been, as we close out this year, 2017, has been a year uh, where, where three very close people uh, died that were in my life. And some other things that have happened, so it's really put me into this state of reflecting, and as I get older and my eyesight gets worse, and there are more gray hairs in the beard, that I really now understand the reality of this journey. As my friend said that we're on the back nine now, if we're talking about golf and 18 holes. We're on the back nine now, we're not on the front nine. And it seems like just yesterday we were 20 years old running around with all the energy in the world, with all the dreams of the world. But in reality we're moving closer to this time with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this 10 list of things, inshallah ta'ala, if we truly understand the happiness that these things bring in our life in the next, we would spend and dedicate our time to these things. So this list is in somewhat of an order, uh, but I'm not saying that it is in this order as in you should do them in this way, but I've placed them in this order. The first thing that I want to remind you of, 
something that takes less than 10 minutes in a day, inshallah, which brings immense benefit, is the Salat al duha Something that I feel, feel is overlooked. Uh, as we know, it's an optional Salat that the Prophet advised the Sahaba to perform between the sunrise and the uh, Salat al duha We can get into the fiqh of it at another time. But really, just to look at the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saying, Abu Huraira, he narrates that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, My Khalil, Usani bi thalaf. That my Khalil, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, has given me, advised me in three things. One, that I fast three days of every month. And two, that I pray two raka'ats of duha. Two raka'ats. Two raka'ats. And that the third is that I pray my witr before sleeping. This is narrated by Bukhari and Muslim in this translation. So, if we look at that for a moment, and I'm sure that in any gathering, if we put our hands up right now and said, who would like to go to Umrah right now? Who would like to go to Hajj this year? Everyone would raise their hand in the room. And then what if I said that, who would want that Hajj? How would you like to know if that Hajj was accepted? And that Umrah was accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then we would all feel, mashallah, that it would known that it would be accepted. The Prophet ﷺ talks about the Salat al duha And he says in the hadith that whoever prays the Fajr and then sits in the place of prayer, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until the sunrise, and then prays two raka'ats, that how he shall be rewarded of praying a Hajj and an Umrah. And he said, with the complete reward. Tam, 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 he said three times. So imagine that. Imagine that we said each morning that we have the opportunity, we believed each morning that we have the opportunity to make a hajj and an umrah accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not the hajj and umrah that will uh, 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 fulfill the obligation of the obligatory, but in terms of its reward. That each day, as we said, just 10 minutes. Just 10 minutes. I was just in Minneapolis last weekend, and one of the parents asked, we were talking about the Sira, and she said to me, she said, you know, what, what Sira book should we be reading with our students? And I said, I'm, I'm sorry, I just have to be real frank with you. I said, I don't think it's a question about what book that we need to read. We know all the books that we should be reading to her. We have all the books that we should be reading. What Imam Zayn's advice was, he said, the best book that you can teach your kids is going to be the one that you read cover to cover. That's going to be the best book that you can read. But my point of what I want to say about it is not about the book that we read, it's not about the thing that we do, it's about having the courage and consistency and the discipline to do this thing over and over and over again. There are other aspects in our life, there are certain things that we will never miss. We won't miss the car payment, we won't miss these types of things, we won't miss certain things that are happening, checking our emails, doing all these types of things. What about our akhirah? What about our akhirah? Where does that fall on the list? As I said, just the other day, I could play basketball for eight, ten hours at a time without stopping, without even thinking. Hang out to all hours of the night and then get up in the morning and go to work and do it all over again. That seemed like just like yesterday. And now as I get to this age where I'm burying my friends, and I have to look in the mirror and understand that this journey is for real. Am I going to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at a time that I have no idea when it will happen? Then these realities become First and foremost, may Allah give us tawfiq and openings. The second one is making salawat on the Prophet Alhamdulillah, this community here honors that. This community here lives that. This community, Alhamdulillah, puts that first and foremost uh, in their gathering. So, Alhamdulillah, you understand that it's divine command from Allah SWT. In Allahumma laikatu ya sallu wa anabi, ya ayuha ladheena amanu. And Ibn Abbas he said that any time Ya Ayyuhan Nas or Ya Ayyuhan Nas was mentioned, he said it was, he took it as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was speaking to him directly, not anybody else, not anyone else's obligation, not anyone else's responsibility. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling me that Ya Ibn Abbas, Sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. So alhamdulillah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us this. Don't think, and now I'm talking about this in terms of asiha wa faraag, about our free time. Uh, our, our good health and our free time. Not that, you know, mashallah, asking to give up vacation, not to do those things, but just that we have intentionality in these moments that we have driving our children back and forth to all of the things that we have to drive them to. You're really taking advantage of these times. 
really taking advantage of these opportunities that maybe just before dinner or just after dinner or these types of things, that maybe this is a time that we can just sit down and be intentional about this so it doesn't slip us by and another day goes by and we say, yeah, we'll do it again and we'll do it again and we'll do it again and that time never comes. And then the ender of time comes. And we don't know what that is. I don't say this to be morbid, but I say it to be real. And I say it also in a manner that if we understood that reality of the ender of time, that it would enhance our relationship with every single person inside that we have contact with. Because imagine if I didn't know if I'm going to see you again. Imagine I didn't know that I'm going to see my wife or my children when I leave the house. What will my relationship with them be? All of the frivolous things that have happened and me being upset at her, I will have to call her immediately and say, if I knew that this reality was that it's going to end at some time soon and this could be the last time that I leave the house, then it doesn't matter what she said to me that I didn't like. And I would call and say, that thing that you said that upset me means nothing to me. So this idea about establishing this, the Prophet Islam telling us to remember death is not just to remember death, yes for us that we are going to meet Allah but also it can enhance our relationships right now with those that we love and those that are close to us. So Alhamdulillah we talked about that here, this uh, Salawat and the Prophet Islam. And then the Prophet Islam saying, to one of the companions that if you made all of your dua, all of your supplication with salawat on me, then your concerns will be taken care of by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and your sins will be forgiven. Not that we would never make dua for us because he so swam, taught us to be making dua for ourselves because he did that himself. But just this is one of the things that he talked to one of his companions in that way. So even just to constantly be in that. And we should think about this. When we talk about akhlaq with our children, this was Amr Tarif that mentioned this to me the last time that we were together, and I think it's very beautiful if we can think about it in this way. We talk about akhlaq and adab for our children. But the Prophet said that two people will be like this with me on Yom Al-Qiyam. The one who makes uh, an abundance of salutations on me, and those who have beautiful akhlaq. So we should be teaching our children that it's not because I'm telling you that you should have beautiful akhlaq, but because you want to be with the Prophet ﷺ, and this is one of the avenues in which you will achieve that. It shifts the whole paradigm. Because now the onus is on you. Here's your ticket. Here's your ticket to have proximity to the best of creation on Yom Al-Qiyamah. The scholar, the, the, the poet has said, Muhammadun dhikruhu rawhun li anfusina. Beautiful. That the remembrance of the Prophet ﷺ brings a rest to our souls. Rohan. It's the same word that is used for tarawih. It's the same root word. Rohan. Right? Tarawih is that salat that brings us rest. The restful prayer after fasting. Tarawih. Muhammadun dhikruhu rohan li anfusina. Right? To make salutation of the Prophet ﷺ is a rest and alhamdulillah brings respite for our soul in knowing that the one who makes one salutation in the Prophet ﷺ, that Allah subhanahu will make ten on you. Beautiful story, Abu Hassan al-Shadi, one of the great scholars of the Ummah. He said that I was traveling between cities one night and I was a concern of the, 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 the animals of prey that were living in this area. I was concerned for my, for my, for my well-being. This is in his biography, he writes this. And he said, I remembered the hadith, Man alayhi marra, sallallahu alayhi ashra. That the one who sends one salutation upon me, Allah will send ten on him. And what is this salutation? That Allah will send rahmah and sakina and mercy upon you. He said, so I remained the whole night sending salawat on the Prophet And he said, it was one of the most safest times that I had felt. Alhamdulillah, he activated this. He put it into practice. He said, and then I prayed my fajr, and then I woke up and I began walking. The sun was up, and he said there was a rustling by a bush, and I jumped out of fear, and out a little asfur, a little uh, little uh, sparrow walked out from the bush, and then he says to himself, blaming his nafs, he says, "Oh nafs, you spent the whole night relying upon Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and you did not fear the animals of prey." As soon as the sun came up, you forgot Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and relied upon yourself and Allah put the fear in your heart from a little sparrow. 
That's the difference of relying upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and relying upon ourselves. Reading the Quran reflecting on its meanings. Reading the Quran reflecting upon its meanings. Tafakkur. Literally meaning to think deeply, systematically and in great detail. Alhamdulillah, we don't have to make a khatam of the Quran if that's, we don't have the himma for that. If we only have the himma to read one ayah, read that one ayah, but understand that ayah. There's so much now, we were talking about this the other day, talking to a, uh, uh, someone at Zaytuna the other day about you know how when they became Muslim I talk about when I became Muslim all of these translations these things didn't exist these books were not there now it's here take that one ayah understand it live it and try to try to implement it and try to live it may Allah give us talk here the scholars have said it's through the reflection that the universe becomes a book to study through the Quran and the verses of the Quran disclose their deeper meanings and secrets more clearly Without reflection, the heart is darkened, the spirit is exasperated, and Islam is lived at such a superficial level that it is devoid of meaning and understanding. So this idea that we need tafakkur and tadabbur, contemplation and reflection on these things that we're meaning, uh, on these things that we're reading. So may Allah Ta'ala give us tawfiq in that. Again, just something that we want to say, just 10 minutes. Just 10 minutes if we can, if we can commit to that. Just 10 minutes. Saying subhanallah, right? How far Allah is from imperfection. Because really, when we say subbihisni rabbika al-a'la in the verse, when you look at the tafsir, the ayat is nazih. It's that to show that Allah subhanahu wa is free of any faults or any type of imperfection. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Mus'ab ibn uh, Sa'ad, he says that my father told me that when he was with the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that he said, does any one of you not have the ability to attain a thousand good rewards per night? Or every day, he said, the Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, this is difficult. A thousand. A thousand. And then he said, let him make tasbih. The Prophet ﷺ responded by saying, let him say subhanAllah 100 times. And a thousand rewards will be written for him, and a thousand sins will be wiped from his record. This is Sahih Muslim. A thousand rewards given, or a thousand sins wiped out from our record, <coughs> just for a hundred times of saying SubhanAllah. This is that idea of when Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, that when we take one step towards Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, or we come a hand span, that He becomes an, he becomes an arm length to you. <coughs> and that when you uh, take a step towards Him, that He runs towards you. What it means is that, the commentary of it is that, his, uh, what you give to him, what he gives back to you is not commensurate of what you give to him. This is the generosity of subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is al-kareem, the most generous. Now we can think about all of these things that are happening in this world, of what we're seeing now, this uh, decision that uh, was made uh, with regard to, to, to Jerusalem, and the issue that's happening in Libya, and happening all of it. What can I do right now? living in, in my living room, other than make dua. And perhaps other things I can engage in other ways. Yes, I can, but I'm saying in terms of the tangent, what I want to say here is that sometimes these things come and they distract us from doing the simple things right here that can bring us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we lose our focus on this. Not to say that those things aren't important, absolutely. And yes, we can write our senators and we can engage in that way. And alhamdulillah, I am saying that we should be doing those things. But what I'm saying is that just doing those things and leaving this off, this is khusr. It's a loss for us. Because at the end of the day, these things will echo in eternity. And perhaps that coming and going, if we don't have a niyyah for that, that correct niyyah, I want to be the problem solver. I want people to understand that I'm the one who cares about things, but in actuality it's really for my nafs and for my ego. If we don't have the right Nia on that, then maybe those things are just haba and manthura. They're just this dust that flies around in the wind. It has no weight on our yom al-qiyam. May Allah save us from that. This other point, play with our children for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jabir, radiallahu anhu, he narrates that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says that we are on our way to an invitation. And we pass by Al-Husayn, and he was in the alley with some of the children of the Ansar, and the Prophet hastened, he ran after Al-Husayn. 
Imagine this for a moment. Just create a, a visual picture of who your Prophet ﷺ is. He runs after Hussein. Hussein is running through the streets away from the Prophet ﷺ. It says that he's yelling and screaming. The Prophet ﷺ grabs him. The Prophet ﷺ pulls him close, puts his hand on his chin, his hand on his head, and kisses him, and kisses him, and kisses him, and then hugs him and holds him close. This is our Prophet ﷺ. This is the one who is mabu'uthun rahmatan al-alameen. This is the one who is sent in the bu'ithu mu'allima. Wa in the bu'ithu li atimu makarim al-akhlaq. This is the one who is sent as a teacher. I've only been sent as a teacher. He's doing this, alhamdulillah, to show his love for his family, no doubt. But he's also doing it that today you and I will sit here knowing that this is a teacher who has taught us how to love our children. Allahumma ameen. Sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. So all of the filth and all of the dirt and all the things that people want to say is because they don't know who is their habib. They don't know who is their, the one who actually cares about them. Who will say, Ummati, Ummati. And as the scholars have said that everyone is from the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu who was born after the his ba'ath, who was born after a time, it's whether they acknowledge it or they do not. But his concern is for his Ummah. Make dua often during times of ease. Make dua often during times of ease. The Prophet ﷺ said, whoever, makes, uh, whoever it pleases that Allah subhanahu wa answer his supplication during times of calamity and hardship, let him increase his supplication amidst the times of ease. Do we only call upon Allah subhanahu wa when we feel that we need him? Right? How about when the cabinets are full and the lights are on and everything is good in my life? Do I remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that time? Because the reality is Alhamdulillah fi kulliha. Not Alhamdulillah when there's hardship in my life. And now I want to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's called a fair weather friend. Right? I only come around when I need something. MashaAllah, I haven't seen you for a while, but Alhamdulillah, how are you doing? Good, MashaAllah. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, you got that done. Right? Alhamdulillah, we can be that person, but how about if we're that person that, <laughs> MashaAllah, do you need something? Being proactive. But all of it is good. I'll call upon the Holy Prophet to come and say, "Oh, come and say, 'Oh, come الحمد كثيرا كما أمر وشروا لا إله إلا الله وشروا أن سيدنا محمد العبد ورسول وعباد الله وذكركم بتقوى الله سبحانه وتعالى وذكركم من قوله سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم حيث يقول في الحديث اتقوا الله حيث ما كنتم وذكركم بشرف مكان مصطفى صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم حيث يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى في القرآن الكريم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى سيدنا محمد كما باركت وصليت على سيد إبراهيم وعلى آل سيد إبراهيم إنك أنت حميد مجيد. So alhamdulillah, just a, the last few here, some other advice to pick up the phone and call your mother or anyone else who fulfills rights uh, or anyone else, close relative, to tell them that we love them. Because the Prophet Islam has said that the wasu, the one who fulfills the rights and the ties of, 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 of family, is not the one who does good when family members do good and bad when they are bad, but rather the wasl is the one when family members cut them off, he does good to them. This is the Prophet Sallallahu To want good for those people that are even uh, being harmful uh, towards you. High level of Iman. But we have that example there from our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. A few other things, just take a few minutes to stop and contemplate Allah Taala's amazing creation. From our eyes, our ability to speak, from our entire body and from all of this 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 world around us. Allah subhanahu wa says in Quran, Wafil Audi, Wafil Audi Aya Tunlil Mukinim, Wafi Anfusikum, Afala to the Sirun. Allah puts this rhetorical question out there to us. And on the earth are signs for those who have certain those who have yaqeen. And in yourselves, he says, Fil Audi Ayatun Wafi Anfusikum. 
right? Lin Mukni. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those people of Yaqeen. That when we look around, our Iman is increased. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Just in closing here, just I'll mention these last two about Alhamdulillah sharing food with people. Alhamdulillah, we do a great job outside of Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to follow that prophetic sunnah. Uh, I'm sorry, in Ramadan, may Allah subhanahu wa allow us to follow that prophetic sunnah outside of Ramadan. The Prophet said to Abu Bar that if you cook anything, any soup, Ya Abu Bar, increase its water and look to your neighbors and give it to them. This is narrated the Muslim. But the hadith that I fear, which really sums it up when the Prophet says, Ya Yuhan Nas, when he first comes to Medina, this is advice that he gives to the Muslims there. He says, Ya Yuhan Nas, Afshu salam, utri ta'am, wasil arham, wasallu bilayl wa nas niyam. The Prophet said that uh, when he came to, 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 to Medina, the advice that he gave to the people was spread salam, feed people, tie the, the bonds of kinship together, and pray at night when people are sleeping. And this is when Aisha radiallahu anha was asked about the Prophet Allah, which action is more beloved to Allah Ta'ala? He said, Adwabaha and Qalla. He said the most, the action that is most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one which is done habitually even if it is small. And Ibn Ta'ala talks about this idea that you should know that if you're doing something for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, small is not a word that you can use. There is no reality of small when something is done for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the last one that I'll mention here, this last one here, is to make dua for your brother or sister in their absence. The Prophet ﷺ said that if a person prays for his or her brother in their absence without them knowing it, an angel hears the dua and replies, Ameen, and may Allah give you the same. May Allah give you the same. And it's narrated that some of the Sahaba and the Tabi'een, that when they wanted something, that they would make dua for someone else to have that thing, having yaqeen, having full belief that an angel is saying for them, Ameen, and for you the same. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq inshaAllah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless our time. Allahumma, Allahumma arham al-mu'mineen wa al-mu'minat. Al-muslimin wa al-muslimat. Ala hayadun wa al-awati wa al-hamma al-rahimin. Allahumma asalak al-huda wa tuqa wa al-afaf wa al-dhina ala al-nas. Allahumma asalak al-huda wa tuqa wa al-afaf wa al-dhina ala al-nas. Allahumma asalak al-huda wa tuqa wa al-afaf wa al-dhina ala al-nas. Allahumma asalak al-khayr wa asalak bihi Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ala sahbihi. Wa na'udhu min sharri wa asalak bihi Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ala sahbihi. اللهم من يخير هذه أمة محمد يوافق نقول خير ومن يغير ذلك فخذ أقل العزيز المقتل يا رب العالمين إنك على كل شيء قدير الحمد الجدير اللهم سعلنا فتوها عارفين وفقنا توفيق الصالحين وفعنا اللهم بالقرآن الكريم اللهم أكرمنا بتلاوة كتابك آنا لأطرافنا ها يا رب العالمين اللهم أنصر المسلمين اللهم أنصر المسلمين في فلسطين اللهم أنصر المسلمين في 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 العراق اللهم انصر المسلمين في الشام اللهم انصر المسلمين في افغانستان اللهم انصر المسلمين في بقعه العرب يا رب العالمين وجعل من المخلصين وجعل من المخلصين وجعل من المخلصين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم سبحان ربك رب العزه عما يصفون وسلام المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين اقيموا الصلاه يرحمني يرحمكم الله